Hey everyone, Copac Design here doing a quick tutorial going through everything that I do when I send a design over to someone, how I go throughout the whole process. So this is actually more of something that you could view my process rather than me teaching you, but let's get started. So you can see right here on my Mac I have all three windows open that the client did send me. Right here we have a front view, right over here we have a top view showing some measurements, and over here they were nice enough to take a picture and put some notes. So for a quick understanding you could see the existing tall cabinets are actually boxed in the areas up here, right here and right here. Looks like they want to hide them. Also, it looks like here and here with the note, they want to add two smaller shelves. And then over here looks like a bench. Um, there's a ceiling height. And over here, it shows the top view like we mentioned before. So this is the one that we're actually going to start off first. We're going to input this top view right here into SketchUp. So simply, we're going to use the lines. We don't need guides or anything right now. Just make a line that's 93 go over the, the 26 right here, go over the 66, go back up that 26 inches, and back over 91.25, or you could enter 91.3 slash 4, and that works also. So right here, going to click line, I have all these shortcuts set up. You might notice me moving kind of fast. And I'll open this on my other screen as well so I can see what's going on here. Okay, so get your line tool out. You're going to basically just click anywhere on the screen. You might want to rotate so you can use these lines to your advantage right here. So click once, I'll move it over. You can see it snaps on the line right there. And we're going to go over the 93 inches first. So 93, enter, we're going to go down. Uh, basically it's rotated in the same way as the drawing. So if the drawing happened to be like this, I draw it sideways, but just to make it easy, I rotated it around just like that. Okay, so we have the 93 inches. 93 enter we're going to go down make again make sure that it snaps on that line right there you can see if it's here it's not a 90 degree angle we're going to do 26 enter and you can see at the bottom right hand of the screen down here once you enter a digit it actually shows it down there so 26 you can see it's showing up click enter and it just made it 26 inches long now make sure if you're doing feet you actually have to use the foot marker and it will change it or you could even do the feet and inches um, in combination if you'd like to so now we're going to go over the 66 inches, 66, enter, go back up, 26, enter, and write 91. I'll put in a fraction here just so you can see how it looks. You do 91 space, 1 slash 4, just like that, enter, and you can double check. Tape measure, I have it set up with T for the shortcut. Click on one point, click on another point, and you can see right where your arrow is, it shows up 7 foot 9, which in fact is 93 inches, 26 inches would be 2 feet 2, correct? and 66 so everything lines up here just double check these seven foot seven so that's correct also let's see I believe the client should have put this wall also so there's 142 and a quarter so we're going to go over here get the line tool out again 142 I'll do a decimal this time 0.25 you can see that's entered in the bottom right click enter and we have everything here I can see it's kind of intersecting this line so I'm going to do command a since I have a Mac get the move tool out Move it over here just so it's not intersecting with these lines. It gets a bit confusing, especially since I changed the style here. You can see everything shows up with the crosshair. I could show you how to do that in a different tutorial that's more in-depth if you'd like to. And you can also notice I changed the background of the screen to something more simple rather than the green and the blue. Um, just It's easier on your eye, and it's, it's more professional looking. So now we have all of those in here. Let's just see and make sure we have all the notes in here. So it looks like they're putting a bench here, cabinet here. So I think the next part that we want to do, let's see, we'd probably want to take this area right here and extrude it upwards to the ceiling height. So you can see the overall height is 89 and three quarters. So let's close this in with a line and it makes a solid shape. Bring that up 93 and three quarters, 93.75, enter. Double check that, 89 and three quarters I actually messed up. enter so that's the actual height for that and let's see if these boxes are on here I'm sure the client put those on there okay so it's 20 inches wide across the front 19 inches from the back wall to the front and 17 inches tall so I think what we're going to do here is use the, the tape measure tool so find that tape measure tool on this line if you double click the center on the crosshair sometimes it won't show up it actually did in the new version though usually you'll have to see how it snaps on there you have to move over here and just double click but now we have a guideline there, 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 and there. So you can see how that kind of pops up if you're doing an orthographic view 
from the top. It just makes it so much easier to align everything. Um, and you can just combine things up just like that. So get out of orthographic view. And let's see how wide they were. They are 20 inches wide from the front. Let's actually get rid of this front line that we did. So we want this one. Let's click on this line, and he said they were 19 inches away, I believe. 19 inches from the back wall to the front. So click on here. Make sure you're, you're on this line. See how that's going down, where this one's going out. 19, enter. So now you have that 19 inches away from the wall. Check back here. There's 17 tall and 20 wide. So 20 wide. Go here. Go to 20. You can even double click this one if you'd like, just to make sure you have this box right here. And let's just double click. Make sure. 20 inches wide. Check your measurements a few times, especially when you're doing work for someone. You'll mess them up if your drawing is wrong. And as far as how much they go down, 19 inches, actually 17 inches tall. So we'll take this one, we'll go down 17 inches. And you could see, I think the best bet for this is to get the rectangle tool, draw up here. But first let's all triple click this, make it a group. I have it set as G for the shortcut, R for rectangle, make a rectangle here, push pull, set to P for the shortcut, bring it down here, check the bottom right of your screen, make sure it's 17 inches, which in fact is one foot five. Click that, we're going to triple select it, make it a group, we're going to click the move tool. We're going to click option, which copies it over, you see a little plus button by the move tool. Click on the corner there, actually we didn't make a component. So I have Z set up for component, enter, you don't have to enter any of that stuff and then we're going to move this with the copy tool. So now you can see if I do anything over here, it will select that one also, and it will change whatever I do here on the side, so it'll be symmetrical. And I have the asterisk mark to get rid of the guides nice and easily. So there we have the shape coming together very quickly. We can also put the mantle on here. He mentioned that the mantle here is, I know it's on one of these, okay, it's five inches thick. So what we could do is just get the rectangle tool and draw something five inches thick and then move it around, but let's use the guides first. So this is the floor, double click that with the guide, using the tape measure tool, of course, again. 44 from the floor to the bottom of it, and then 49. So we'll do 44 and then 49. So click on this, go up, 44, enter, same thing, go 49. And when you're entering something, you can see I just did it. Let's see, if you open it up, see I'm typing 889. If you mess up, just press the backspace button and you can change it before you press enter, and escape will get rid of it. So let's double check this, make sure it's five inches. In fact, it is just like he said, five inches thick. And as far as how much it comes out, I guess that doesn't matter too much for now, unless it's on here as a note. But the cabinets are getting flush with the wall, so it's not a big deal. So let's say it looks about 10 inches. So we're going to draw that on here, bring it out 10 inches with the push pole, triple select it, make it a group. If you want to, you could use the title to info and also the layers. And I can name this fireplace and walls. I can name these shelves. I can name this mantle. And I'll show you quickly what happens when you do that. Don't mind my spelling, is you could make it invisible if you need to. So you just click this and it will hide it simply. Also, if you need different uh, color by layer, you could do that also on here, color by layer and it'll change it up so you can see exactly what's going on. So use the layers at all times, it makes it so much easier. Um, and also another trick that they have, when you're opening this, if you're trying to edit it and go around, I have a shortcut for Shift H, basically it, what it's doing is when you open up a group, it's hiding everything else. And again, you can find those options up here, just play around with them, and I'll do another tutorial to show you exactly how to do those. But again, let's keep on going with this project. So let's see what note we need next. I think we're almost ready to start building the actual cabinets themselves. Looks like we don't need this wall over here because there's only a cabinet going in this area right here. So let's check out the pictures that he did send. There's an outlet there, so we'll make sure to keep that in mind over here. There's some lighting, but it's not going past the lighting, so we're okay here. I believe there are some other pictures. Let me pull those up really quick and just make sure everything looks okay so far. Lots of running back and forth. Okay, so in this picture right here, it's pulling up right now, you could see 
goes a little bit over, but we don't really need that in the drawing because he didn't supply us measurements anyway. And we're just focusing basically when we give the client a view on this corner over here. But just to make it easier, let's go ahead and open up this group, make these walls roughly six inches, and go all the way over here. See what's not locking on there. If I want to make it even press down shift, it'll stay on this line, and you can move it anywhere in a line of this. I'm going to line it with this line right here, and then go out another six inches. And then I'm going to go down here again. Press the shift button so it stays on that line. Click over here, connect them, have this extrude it up to here. And separate group, get the rectangle tool and connect this outside edge. This outside edge, triple select that, make it a group, make it a layer also. Ceiling. So now we have the ceiling, we have the mantle. And if you'd like, we could actually just make a floor really quick. Why not? Just to make sure everything's aligned properly. Click on this corner to this corner. You don't have to extrude that to a flat face. We're not doing anything with it, so you can just keep it flat just like this. Of course, when it's blue, you want to right-click and you reverse faces. That's something else, a little bit more complex, but just for viewing the color, it helps me out too. So we have that. Let's rename this to the floor. These windows all show up here under window. You can see if you bring all to front, if they're all messed up and not organized, you could click on that also. It'll help you out. And sometimes you'll make another layer here by accident. So what you could do is just delete that and then you have to kind of play around and see which one you might have deleted. See the ceiling one, I pressed C or something by accident. So we'll click this, go up here. You can either use the drop down and click on ceiling, or you can start to enter it, C, pops up, click enter. Now it's aligned on this layer, you can see it hides. Okay, so now for the design process, we could actually get started. Let's see exactly what he said for that. Of course, I saved it way too late, but make sure you do save everything properly, just in case it quits because that will happen at the worst moment possible. See, I have a Copac design. I have jobs 2017. I have the names, the folders, and I'll put proposal one. Okay, so we read those notes. Let's see what this one is. I'm not sure what this one is. These are the mantle. Okay, so this was the same measurement basically that he put over here in the red writing, just saying how tall, 44 to 49 inches, 5 inch thick mantle, with the ceiling height, those are 19 going back, 17 going down, let's just check those, yep, that's 17, that's 19, and this one is 20 inches, 20 inches, so that's all correct here, 3 and a quarter, um, not quite sure what that three and a quarter is. That might be the trim. I know trim is usually about three and a half or so. So yeah, it looks like that is the trim. So what we could do for that, just to visualize how, how much the trim comes out, go on this wall right here, open up this group. You can see just the face right here. You're gonna need to do the push to pull tool, but press the all or option key. See how it gets a little plus right there? Move it up and down, you see it adds the extra line because you're basically duplicating that push pole and you're making like a separate shape. And we'll do 3.25, enter. And now you can see we have roughly that baseboard on there. We could also do it to this one. And if I use the shift H to hide everything except for this group, you can see how nice it works out right now because that floor is not in my way. So we're going to just line that up with there. Of course, there is no baseboard on the mantle escape to get out of it, delete our guides, and if you wanted to get fancy, you can even double click these, push pull it about half an inch, just to know how much room you have, but I think we're going to just leave those flat like that for now, because they'll probably take it out if they put in built-in units here. So we're done with this one, shaker doors, 36 inch cabinet, that's all mentioned on here actually. So starting the design process. Let's see what we're going to do. 36 inches. This 19 right here is for how much it comes out. So let's do this simply 19 inches. And 36 from here. And we could even... Looks like they'll be symmetrical, but let's just do that on here to make sure everything's lined up properly. You can double check it using the tape measure tool. Clicking computer here. 3 feet by 17. 18, 19. So it's 19 inches. So we'll have two units right there. 
and let's see what he says for these. 36 inch cabinet, we got the was it gas shut off in there, so we might have to have the side open. We'll confirm that with him. Four foot seven bench. Let's make sure we have enough space over there for the bench. Four foot seven. Four foot seven and a quarter, so it's kind of close, and that's without the baseboard, so we'll make a note on there that he might have to remove the baseboard. We'll get this layout document open. Alright, well for this, I have everything set up with templates and everything. So this is the main one that I created. It has a title block and everything. And I also have the different pages over here with the names and down here. But I think for him, we're going to do a new template that's 8.5 by 11, so the 24 by 36. So we'll go over to here and select 8.5 by 11 default. I resize all these. I said this swapped the logo out really quick because I updated that. It's nice and easy. Just drag and drop it from your desktop. PDF image, nice and crisp. Zoom in all you want. We'll put this just about right up here. Get rid of this one. Make this one full screen. And this will just make it easier in case he prints it himself um, because he's probably not going to print a 24 by 36. Probably have a standard printer. So that's nice right there. We can change all the names and everything here. The date changes automatically. My phone number's already there. Office built in, we could change this to just basement built in or whatever project name is. Capital letters usually. So you can see already, we're just getting started, and there is so much work involved just in setting up all the documentation. So the quicker you get all this set up, the easier it'll make the project. And of course, I'm explaining it, so it's taking much longer. But that's okay. So we have that right there. We'll make sure to save that in the same area. We have Jobs 2017 in his third project, and we'll put Proposal 1. And of course, it saves it as a different file, so you know SketchUp versus the layout file. And we'll go over to this file, check out this, and see what it says. So shaker drawers, adjustable shelves, 36-inch cabinet, right here, 44 tall, 19 deep. So we did the 19, that should be 19, double check, yep, it's 19. 44 tall, so 44, enter. You can see we have the height right there. And you know what, let's actually put it on here too. 44 and the biggest part with the guides versus the line if you put the line you have to delete it and it's just it'll mess up your model So use the guides and you can delete them easily just going like that just to start over It's so much easier. So really in the habit of using the tape measure with the guides 44 inches enter So now you can see we have this basically what some people might just do for rough sketching is to say okay, there's your cabinet and There's a door and there's a door of course not on the scale at all, but that's not how I do it You'll see exactly how I do it in a second so that's our base. Let's group that, make it a component, click enter, get the move tool, get the option tool over here so you can see we're copying the same thing, and align that corner. With that, that's why I grabbed that corner. If you grab this corner, it might be easier, or actually it might be harder if you don't have this tape set up over here. So let's see right here, notes, shaker doors, three adjustable shelves, one inch thick top. So actually it's not going to be 44 inches plus the shelf. It's going to be 44 inches overall with the one inch thick shelf. So we have that right here. Let's go ahead and also move this over here and this one over here just to get the overall outline that we need. If you wanted to, you could make one at the top too. You could bring this over here just so you know, and you can even bring this one over here, but that gets too messy. So I'd really prefer not to do that. So we'll get rid of that one just to have the, the outline on these two walls right here generally. Okay, we'll make sure to save it again. I just press Control S, Command S actually. Check our notes. Um, so there's really nothing else here um, for these two cabinets. So basically, we're just going to start the construction. Um, usually, they might have their own construction, but the way that I do it usually is to have inch and a half, inch and three quarters, inch and five eighths, roughly, maybe even two inch styles and rails. So usually, I'll incorporate that if they want to change them. Of course, that's easy for them to change them. So let's just go with. Um, inch and three quarters it actually looks like this is almost two inches maybe we should match that and even these are closer to two inches so let's go with two inch style and rails just to make it easier for them to be more consistent with everything it might look better with the brick and they could change that worst case 
I don't know what that's doing. Um, let's see. One of these on each side. Okay, so I'm guessing if it is a cabinet, we don't have too many details, so this is where we just have to assume a few things. So the baseboard's going here. We want to elevate a little bit. I'm guessing maybe they'll keep the same baseboard to put around. So we're going to first bring this up to the molding right here. Usually plywood, ha let's say three quarter inch, because I would not trust half inch for something like this. Um, so that's going to sit right there, basically, just for the base to line up with the molding. But we're also going to want some additional space because of the styling rail for the front of it. Um, there's going to be no toe kick, so we don't have to worry about that. So maybe, usually what we'll do is we'll put it up another two inches, just so that what we have here is two inches, is the trim comes up to here, this line right here, and then this is the reveal once the styling rail kind of, you know, goes up here in this area. So... Let's see. I'm trying to think what he's going to do here. I'm guessing we actually probably want this one set back a little bit so we could double click on this, get our line tool over here, and just move this down those two inches. Because generally what he might do is either do plywood down this half and then go up with poplar or maple or something. But you know what, what I'm going to actually think is that only the back of plywood so let's get rid of this okay so this is going to be plywood he probably doesn't miter that he probably just does a, a butt joint or something there or even some kind of rabbit joint but let's say this side is going to go all the way up here it's going to go there of course one inch away from the top this one is too you see those are three separate pieces and this one is too usually what i'll actually do let's get rid of the ceiling layer is let's double click that make it a group double click that make it a group double click that make it a group triple select that delete it and then open this we're going to extrude that 0.75 just in place of what was there before but now these are all in separate groups so just different ways of going about things we need to 0.75 enter and then also this one was going on the outside edge you can see of course if we go to this line it's 0.75 as shown in the bottom right so we can just click right there and now we have our plywood construction for the outer part. And I'll, I'll show you later why this will help, because you'll actually be able to make like an exploded um, view for them. So bring that to there. So now it's easy if you need to um, open up that group and just move this one over, move that one over. You can see it's actually copying over here, which is perfect. That's what we wanted. Okay, so. Over here, what we did is we have, have the three and a quarter. So let's go ahead and bring that line up on here. And we're going to have the two inches. See, if you click on here and then up there, see how it just puts that dot? That's why sometimes I was saying you have to not go in the center. You have to kind of just go a little bit in two inches. Just assume, because we want the whole face frame to be solid wood, bring that over there. I'm um, probably using three quarter inch stock, three slash four, enter, triple select, make it a group. So that whole piece is going to be wood for the face frame, just for painting it, making it easier for him. And also on top of here, uh, let's say if we're going with two inch styles and rail, we'll do two inches, we'll do a rectangle tool and go over here. You could actually go like this, triple select it, make it a group, make it a component, move it over with the alt tool and come over here, click on that, open up this component drag it, oops, drag it up to the top, you got, you got two right there, so you can put components inside of components and it works just fine. And then we're also going to want another one right here, two inches down, two inches, when you draw this rectangle just make sure it shows two inches. Let's slide this guy over, triple select, make it a group, we don't need a component, it's not going anywhere else, and then let's see. We want a shelf on the inside. Instead of trying to draw a shelf on the inside corner here and then rotating all the way around trying to get in there, let's just draw one on top. That shortcut you just saw was Shift Z. If I'm stuck in here, I'm kind of lost. I'll press that. It brings me to the extent. So it goes up here to View. And oh, it's actually Camera. And then Zoom Extent. So that's what that shows me in case you ever get lost somewhere in the model. Quickly takes you right back to the start to show everything. So get the rectangle tool. Not that group open first though. 
So I'm going to move this into that group, actually. Just copy those, delete them, open up this group, paste them in. That's paste in place. So you'll see up here there's paste and paste in place. If you paste in place, it'll actually, you know, if I just do paste, see how it just goes anywhere. Paste in place will put it right back where you copied it from. Let's draw with the rectangle tool. Draw this triple. Actually, let's make it 0.75 first. 0.75, enter. Triple select, make it a group. And we're going to move it down. Get the move tool, click on this corner. Get it on the line right there. You can even go up a little bit, see how it snaps on that blue line. Hold down shift, you can see how the, the little lines pop up there. Want it aligned with this, click on that. And you can see it's nice and aligned with that. However, since it is a little bit big, I might want to hide everything, go in here and make a note to him in the center that we're going to put something here. So 0.75 is 6 eighths, so we'll go with 3 slash 8 here to get the halfway mark, 3 slash 8 here. And we're going to make a note to add a piece in the middle here just to help strengthen the unit. Of course, this is up to them, I don't have to add it, but any suggestion does help. So now you can see that's much more sturdy. If you wanted to add a few more of those, let's see, I'll show you right here. Click the move tool, move this whole thing over, snap it on this edge right here. Do the move tool with the option key so it copies it over. And click on this line. Now before clicking anything else, backslash two. Now you can zoom out with two fingers. See I'll put it right in the middle. Backslash three without clicking anything else again. We'll do three. Backslash six, we'll do six. You can even go backwards. See how it puts two, puts one. So whatever you, you do, you need to, um, whatever you need to get to, you could. So I think We'll put two just in case. And also same thing works. If you need to multiply this, the move tool option, click it there and do the asterisk four. It'll put four in a row, even spacing. So we'll get out of that group. We'll save it again. We're going to put the top on here. Um, he said one inch thick. It probably does have an overhang, so I'm not sure with the overhang, but he could mention that in the notes. Let's just put a one inch overhang on each side. Triple select that, make it a group, copy it, delete it. So we can put it in this group, paste in place up here you do want a back on this also i'm guessing so just put the back on the inside so you don't have to see it and that could be half an inch could be three quarter inch let's just put three quarter inch so he gets two sheets of the material and he could not have to waste his time buying other material he could just use what's there three quarters triple select it make it a group there's going to be adjustable shelving in here Usually, let's see, about three inches away from there. About three inches away from there. Probably about six inches from the top and from the bottom. Now, this is a little bit tedious. You don't have to do this part right here. But I'll just show you. Uh, C for the circle, you can see down here, 24 sides. If you do 24 sides, see how once you get it really big, how the lines are straight. So what you do is, when you first click the circle tool, Enter, let's say 100, that's usually the, the base that I go off of, so that's nice and crisp. Click on the center here, and you can see what it's doing is a radius, so if you type in 1 inch, it's actually going to be 2 inches, because that's the diagonal versus the radius. So let's say for a quarter inch um, pinhole, I want an eighth inch, so I could do 0.2, or I could do 1 slash 8, enter. But since the segments, there were too many, it kind of just assumed different ones. Copy that over here and over here. That one's selected. Triple select that one, make them go a group because if you start copying and pasting these everywhere without grouping them, it's going to be a huge mess. Okay, select all, get the move tool. You could really just click anywhere right here, make sure they're moving up, and let's just say two inches away and multiply that times five, times 10, times 12, until you get roughly to that. So now you can see what we have. Let me give some nice shelf pinholes on here. You don't have to go crazy. If you need to, what you could do is extrude that and extrude that, and then you could bring this in, let's say, point 0.2, and you could go crazy clicking every single one if you want to. But it's really not necessary, so just keep it in a group so that's organized. And we're going to also move those over here. And see when I'm moving, you can click on just different points, moves it right over. Nice and easy. Look at that. We have two cabinets made, and we're doing so much less work because we're using the component option. Okay, so we're at about 30 minutes so far, and we're just getting started. However, everything is, is perfect. You know, everything's made into groups and layers, um, so we're doing quite well. Um, usually for a door, we're not going to put a piece in the center because I want shelves, but let's actually see how many shelves he wants. 
adjustable shelves well. Let's see, roughly, I'm thinking maybe 8 inches or so they'll make a shelf. So 8 inches... I'm just trying to think how many they're going to want, so... We'll use that same thing again with the guides to, to divide them, so click up here, divide by 4. That's one, two, that's, I think three shelves would be fair for them. If he needs more, he can talk to them, you have to do more. I'm gonna click here, move that up. You can just roughly move it up here somewhere and divide by three. See, that even looks about right. Divide by four will actually give you that right there. We'll delete this one right here. And you can see we have those three adjustable shelves. If you want for the client, we'll just move all these down. So that when they're looking at the 3D view, you could actually see that they sit on the pinholes because they, you know, the client might see this and be like, oh, well, how do they connect because there's holes there and the shelf isn't lined up. So just make it as easy as possible for them. And it's something that only takes a few seconds. Move down, kind of just line them up. And there you go, right there. Okay, so shaker doors. What I have for shaker doors, I have my own separate company folder right here. Molding profiles. Every time I make a new profile or I, I download one, I keep it in here. And you can see right here, I just have, basically I have a, a color swatch and all these different groups that I use um, when I create things. So they're all in one place. I know where the folder is. It's nice and quick to get to. Um, I do little mock-ups of crown molding right here. I'm just trying to see how they work. It's very simple to do something like this. I'll show you in a second. Let's see, so they're doing shaker doors. So usually for a raised panel, I use one of these. Shaker doors is this. We want it to be two inches from here to here. It usually changes with projects. However, this one is two inches. So we'll copy and paste that. You can go from file to file here, and we're going to paste it into here. So first order of business is to make a rectangle around the whole opening. Usually I use half inch offset hinges. So we'll use the offset tool I set to O, click on the center. Sometimes it does that, just click uh, back, which is Command Z. Click on here once, go outside. 0.5, enter for the half inch overlay, double click the center, delete it. Now we're going to find the center here. And we're going to, we want about an eighth inch opening, so one slash one six on each side. Of course, you don't even have to go this crazy doing the, the eighth inch opening, but it does help out, trust me. From the line to the line, now double click this, make that a group, triple select this, get rid of that, get rid of the guides. Okay, that's a group. Let's make it a component. Let's copy it over directly to this one and then separately move that over one slash eight right here. You can see those doors. Open up this group. We're going to paste in this. First thing you want to do is rotate it. I have Q set up because it kind of looks like the protractor. Um, you can see twisting around. I'm going to rotate at 90 degrees. So on the bottom, you can see angle 90, enter. That didn't quite do it. I actually meant to do 180, do another 90 degrees. Use the move tool, bring it over here. You don't want to start down here. It's not going to wrap around the, the image right. Do it anywhere where it has room to wrap around, usually around the center somewhere. A triple select this, you can see it highlights this, so hold down shift, double click that so it gets rid of it. Follow me tool, set up the F, click on this, and there you have the shaker door right there. But I might have done it. I did do it backwards because I was trying to explain the process. You can see now since it's connected to this, if you're trying to move around, it's moving that shape. So what you have to do is either go back with um, Command Z, or you could actually make it a group and then rotate it 180 or even right click and you flip along. It should be the blue edge. It's not the blue edge, it's the red. And then you can move it back over here and I have a shortcut for explode as shift E. Make sure that's lined up on the line, it's not gonna work. It explodes that, now everything's one shape. Triple click it, hold down shift, double click this, follow me tool for F, click on that. Shaker doors, bring this edge all the way up here delete this line shift H you can see we have these shaker doors right here if you need to close on the back side sometimes I'll do that depending on the shape you can even move this out eighth inch just to visualize exactly what's going on there so that's how you make a shaker door raised paneling is the same way very simple if you have an arc up here or something it's you know it follows it right along with the follow me tool so very simple right there um, let's see what we have going on here I think I messed up the base or something Oh, I see what I did. So, I actually want this base to go around. These are going to sit, actually, you know, actually, we don't even need this base. I created that base, but we do not need that one because the plywood is actually coming straight from the top to the bottom here and here also. So, that was a little, little mess up there. And now we have these, and what we could do is we could set these on a separate layer um, so that when we're putting them in the drawing, you know, we could change them around or you could get the 
protractor tool go up here. See, there's different ones to do this. It's going to move it this way. If you do it on here, it's going to move it out this way. So we'll do each one, let's say, just 70 degrees, 70 enter. You could leave this one like this, or you could get the protractor. Do the same thing, or even open it more. Now you can see each one. If you want to take this one, make it look the opposite, just flip it along the red side. And now, you know, they're, they're basically symmetrical. So we'll undo that to close them. And so let's see, he wants an idea up here also. Let's see, so we have this one open right here. Custom, customer interest in hiding these boxes. Any ideas on hiding them? Let's see. I think the, the best option for this would to me make it the same width of it as, uh, as the cabinet. However, if that won't work, we could simply add some crown around it. Let's see, and a fake door if we need to. So... Let's, let's do a couple options here. So in this case, what I'm going to do is to make this whole thing a group. Let's save it again. Use the move tool and just copy it over times two. Before you start changing everything, just make a few copies. So we'll do one iteration here, another one here. And this is only a group, so if I open, it's not going to change everything. However, if I open up this, it's going to change all the cabinets. So since this is a group only and not a component, it's perfectly fine. So let's assume up here, maybe they just want to match these with some simple shaker doors. So actually, this is a component. Okay, so what we have to do here, see how it's opening up all these? In this group, click on this one and this one, right click and do make unique. So when you make those unique, so you click them, these two are the same, but those are not copying off of them because these two are unique on each other. So let's just offset those um, two inches do that on two inches. When you click offset, I just double clicked because it will copy the same measurement you did here over there. And I'm not going to draw this one out too much right now until he approves it, but 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So we could do something like that possibly. This one might be a little bit bigger though since we extruded it. So we have to go on this edge and move it in three quarters just to make sure everything lines properly. Now on the right, there's probably a mishap because they're opposite of each other. Yeah, see this one right here, so we're gonna have to double click that and just rotate it. Flip along actually on the edge. And the same measurement, so let's just bring this over there. And now they're opposite of each other in the correct position. Um, let's see the picture again. I think probably want some type of crown molding on that to dress it together. I'm not going to assume he's going to put crown molding in the whole room because it's a whole separate project. So what we could do here, we could do a two-piece crown molding to make it look unique. I think maybe we'll stick it to that, that two-piece molding that actually looks pretty nice. If he doesn't like that, we could change that, but make it the best you could in the first one. So let's see, that's going to go in here. We'll copy and paste it, rotate it around 90 degrees. We want this to be aligned with that, and then we're going to use the move tool again. Go down on this edge, actually. Get it straight down, use the shift tool, and line it up this edge. And I can see both edges align properly. Um, let's see, this edge is actually going to be down more. Because we're going to want that, and then we're going to want two inches from that, so right there. So we can even go like that, and we can bring that to there. And use that. Okay, this one right here. Go ahead and make it a group first, or you could extrude it and then make it a group. Um, so first things first, get the line tool and connect to this bottom corner. And just follow along. Make sure every line is straight. Going across that it snaps around. Okay, so now triple click this. You'll make sure that all of this is selected going around. Just like we did the doors, triple click it, hold down shift, double click this to select it. Get the follow me tool. For F, click on that. And look at that nice crown molding. You can see all those lines right there for the contours. Triple click it, go over here to soften edges. And usually I have it set about there. And you can see how it will change just the way it looks. 
just like that. So we could do something like that. I'm not too happy with how that looks. It looks a little strange. Um, but we'll see what he thinks. We might actually... You know, it would almost look better with something like this. I'm not quite sure. Can I select both of these? No, I can only do one at a time. I think something like this might look better, actually. No, let's... Well, if there were shelves in here, maybe? You know, we'll do that for a separate proposal. So, okay, so we have this here. It's just something simple right there. We'll see what he says about that. I'm not too sure, um, since there's no ideas there. Let's roughly put in a little fireplace here. So it looks like those are... Just go with 12. 12 and about 10. Use the arc tool, and again, that has how many sides. It says 12 right now. Let's set it to 100. Press enter. Go over here. Try to match the drawing over here. Something like this. Don't be concerned about because, you know, if this is on, none of your measurements depend on this. So it's more of just for aesthetics right now. So we could either copy that, delete it, go into this group, paste it so it snaps on, and just bring it in like three inches or so, just so it looks like a fireplace. Really quick, if we want to add textures, we can do that also. I do that last in case you don't want to see that part. Um, since we're going off of this one partially, let's copy this one over. And we're going to, again, make these unique right here and right here. Make unique so that way when we open these up, it's not going to change any of them. You can see if I hide them, there's nothing else selected, it's just these two. So, bring this down to here. Oops, to just the top right here. Um, we will use this up here to go two inches for the style and rail. I'm not quite happy with how that looks though, that's the only thing. But something like this might give him some more work too if they like the taller cabinets instead of just the two bottom cabinets, so it might work better for both of us. So we could do something like that. That looks nicer. Um, I don't like how the edge falls out though. I mean, from here, it, it's different. I'm not, not quite sure. It's a very strange space. You know, I think I'll send these two over just as a rough idea. See what he thinks, and then once he mentions something, I'll change those. Because this comes out too much over here. There's, there's really no reveal right there. It's kind of pointless. Um, it could be doors inside, but I'll wait because that'll take more work. And it's not worth putting it in right now. Let's see, we have that, we have that, so those are okay just for the pr first proposal to say, hey, like, here's, you know, the first half an hour of work, how does it look so far? And they'll say, I like this, I don't like this, change this up, just before you get too in-depth, because once you start going in here and, you know, doing all this stuff, it takes a while, so these two are pretty much good, they're not going to have many changes on that. And let's go in here and see what else it says. Any ideas, I'm hiding them. Okay, so that's one, we have two options for them. Very quick options, and maybe that'll spark some more ideas in their head. And I think there was a bench over here it mentioned somewhere. Four foot seven bench. Okay, so that bench is probably this. I thought I'd de design another bench, but I guess we don't have to. So that's about it for now. Um, let's add the colors in quick just to help them visualize it. I have paid. It's called Podium SU. It's an awesome render client. It's the only one that I stand by to use. It's quick. Um, it's great. They're not paying me or anything for saying this. I just love it so much and I want to share it with you guys. Basically, you open it up once you pay for it. It has different materials and everything. It renders perfect picture quality. It's great. So, wood flooring. The textures are very nice as well. It's actually a carpet. So, the carpet, they don't have too many, I don't think, actually. But there should be something kind of close to match. I think this matches pretty well. That looks pretty good. So, we put that in there. It really just drops a cube with the texture on it. And all you have to do is open up this. B I have set for the colors. Um, press Command to pick up the color with the eyedropper tool. Click on this. Get rid of it. Delete that. And you're all set. And they have stone. So stone wall, I'm guessing it would be. You can see a surface is like a countertop, whereas the wall is stone like this. 
So they have something a little bit cleaner over here. Different colors. Just try to get something to match. It'll help the client visualize what's going there. Um, not really help them out. Let's see. I'm sure there's something to match this closely. And this one's closest we'll get actually. So we'll copy this over. If they're big, you could just resize it right here um, to something like this and go over eyedropper tool and see if you click on that with the group, it's going to do everything. And he's not making stone cabinets, so we don't want that. Open up this group first and select just the face or something. Click it over, however, it doesn't go past that. So we have to draw a line, draw a line from here to here. Once you have a line tool open, you can click the orbit tool uh, shortcut without it getting rid of the, the point for the line if you need to. Over here, you know what, we actually should have just opened up this and just went like that. That would be a lot easier. Delete this, delete this, make that, that, and that. not too bad. We can make this black just because it'll match a little bit better. A gray color so I can still see the depth for it. We need to make that a little bit lighter. And tan color. So we could use eyedropper tool on pictures as well. If you click this button, go over to here and pick an area that looks like it's a good color. And you could color the walls that color. Let's add the mail to color while we're here using this, and we should have a wood one. It might not look the greatest in the SketchUp model, but when it actually renders, it, it looks um, pretty realistic, at least better than the SketchUp textures that you'll get, and I'll show you a preview of that towards the end as well. So we'll just get something that kind of could represent what we're looking for. You can pick a few and put them up here and then see how they look. Thinking if I use this, we'll go in here, and of course this isn't even that necessary, this part either, but I like to do it for my clients because it will help them visualize the project. So you could do that, or you can also, there should be a separate button, I can't think of it right now. Make unique texture. Okay, so we have to do that first. That did not work. Okay, we'll just use a SketchUp texture for now. Um, just go to wood and just do something simple like that. That'll, that'll work okay for now. Um, so you can see we have everything here. You could do the baseboard the same color if you need to. I'm not sure what they're doing around that, if they're going to continue the baseboard, they probably will. So we'll ask them about that also, because typically what I'll do is I'll bring the baseboard all the way around like we were planning. Use a rectangle tool, come over here, and you can see the right numbers moving, so we're going to do comma, point, five, enter, and that'll usually put a shape. Right there. It's actually the left number, so point five comma, and don't put anything. See how it does that? It'll take the first number and keep it what's there. And um, the second number, it'll change it according to what you put. So we could put that there, delete that, miter the edge quick so we could see it. Triple select, copy, delete it, open up this component over here. Paste in place, make it a color, and just do something like that. Okay, so we have two of those right there. Very quickly, we'll copy the whole model. This is the best part about the layout program. Go into here and just paste it directly in there. 
most important part though is to open up styles and change those around and also changes to either vector or hybrid vector is completely crisp lines you can print that as big as you want hybrid is the same thing but it has textures see a vector it makes it a plain um you see like a, a plain texture right there which is color hybrid will take the texture and kind of incorporate it in with the vector lines you can also change line styles to let's say usually like 0.2 or something if you want just like that if you want something kind of see-through to see the shelves you could do that too so you can play around with all of those so we have that if you need to go back in the SketchUp file this part about podium is i also have people you could put in here to help the client visualize. So that would be up here, people and animals, silhouettes. And usually I'll just put in something kind of simple. Something like this. Just like kind of visualize. You want to check the height though because sometimes these people are too big and someone will be like that person's way too tall. That doesn't look right. The scale's off so you can measure him about the same height as me. Kind of move him over so he's not obstructing everything right there. I'll copy that again. Delete that. Paste it back in. You can change these constraint lines over here if you need to. If it's too complex though, when you click on vector or hybrid, it's going to take forever to render. So something simple like this will do whatever you need. Um, so we will add this in here. Just like this, get a little bit closer so they don't see all of that. You know, let's put the ceiling in here. That almost looks like a ceiling. I think that'll be fine. But just because, let's put that there too. You know what, they actually mentioned one more thing that we should throw in here. I think they mentioned the colors. Let's see. So I think they wanted the wall colors changed or the cabinet colors. So we'll just double check that really quick. Okay, so it says... We were thinking the wall com color, almond roca, and dark blue color, distance or navel. And a dark brown... Okay, so we'll change those after once the design is fine. But let's send these over first just to give them some time to respawn before it gets too late. Make that a little bigger. Come in here. And see, with the ceiling and everything, it just makes it look like a closed-in room. Um, one part in architecture school that they're always telling you about is to not, you know, go down here because that's not how they're viewing it. They're really viewing it from up here, but for the angle sometimes, you know, it'll just help get an overall picture by doing something like this. So I can even put in something like this for now. You can see it'll delete that guy if it's in raster instead of hybrid, though. So you would have to fool around with these sometimes. I can change that. And it's cool because you get to orbit the same way you do in a SketchUp model right here. Um, so we're going to put that right there. Put those on. And we're going to get this one also over here. Let's copy and paste the ceiling though, so we have the consistency. Put this guy over here as well. Copy that, paste it in here, and make this the same size. Kind of get the same angle if you could, roughly. You could make scenes too, and then change layers and hide them and all that. If you want the scenes exactly the same, so we could save that for another tutorial. Also, that's uh, pretty close right there. So proposal one, closed in tops, and proposal two. 
hybrid. Oh, I didn't change the colors on that. So I think what I'm going to do is just to copy and paste this and this over here. just be easier for now. If you need to edit this one separately, you can go to Edit 3D View. Oh, actually not that one, sorry. Click out of it and do Open with SketchUp. So that'll open it in a separate file that is just connected to the layout file itself. So since I move this over and I want to get it back in there, I could really just paste it inside of here. Just like this, save that. Once you save that one, it's going to update the layout file just like that. And it has the ceiling in there. So as long as you don't copy and paste this as the same uh, file from SketchUp, you could open them differently and change them. So we'll get this kind of set up where this one goes. Roughly around there, we'll make this one. I have the control Z set up here too, so you can see if I get lost in here, control Z, shift Z actually, it'll kind of uh, take me back where I want. And proposal one, proposal two. Something like that. So that should be okay for now, just to send them really quick. Um, just for good say changes, send it to the client just really quick and see what they say. However, further in the process, I'll show you a file right here of how these usually go when I spend more time and when I'm not trying to explain it step by step. So there was one last year in 2016 right here for a built-in that I did. And eventually for the proposal, what ended up happening was something like this. Proposal one, two, and three. And then here, you know, I kind of added some notes and everything. And for the final proposal, you can see, you know, I made it really look nice for them. Um, you know, I show all the detail and everything and put a nicer rendering for them. And show different opportunities. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot you can do with these drawings. There are also some opportunities when you're doing some kind of framing or deck work right here. So this one actually came out pretty cool printed at 24 by 36, the construction place loved it. So I printed out something like this right here. It was actually this page right here that you're looking at. That's about to open. So this is an example of more of a professional one um, for something for framing, which I will do eventually. You can see right here, you can change the colors, do existing framing, proposed framing, to extend something, um, you can do all the measurements. So SketchUp and Layout is completely capable of doing something like this. You get add the schedule and everything in here, timeline, materials. This is the best part, being able to do 3D callouts right here. Um, you know, just to rotate it around, do whatever view you want, um, and then call each thing out and say, you know, this is this. It really helps them visualize, okay, what does this look like? goes up here, it looks like this. So, if you want to see anything else, let me know, comment below, and thank you so much for watching.